Good morning everybody, it's Chris at Lion Punch Forge. Today we've got some fun unboxing and setup things going on for an Orion 200i 3. Right down here in two boxes, we're gonna do an unboxing, look to see what's there, and then we're gonna head over into the studio and actually do a setup, unboxing, and uh, how you get your Orion 200i 3 welder running. If you guys haven't already, there's a red subscribe button down here in the bottom. Go ahead and hit that. Just slam the crap out of it if you want. But if you don't, because you know, that's okay, because I'm not the boss of you anyway. But if you want to see more Orion Welder videos, hit that guy and that little bell. It'll tell you when I make a new video. So check it out and enough talking because we're going to go down here and play with welders. All right, so we have two boxes a big box and a little box. This is what your welder comes in if you order the 200i3. Nicely packed. You got your instruction manual right on top. So first thing you look for when you open this up is bam, instruction manual. First thing I notice opening both boxes is that the level of amazing packaging. So this is some open cell foam and it is perfectly protecting all these parts to your welder. So the first thing that comes out of the large box, at least how I have it packaged here, is going to be my touch screen. The thing I notice about that is that it has some heft to it. It's nice and heavy. Feels like it's, you know, it's, this is gonna war proof. It's, it feels substantial, heavy, and amazing quality. So we'll set that aside, dig deeper into this box. And I would imagine you probably have your power supply. Yep. Wow, look at that thing. So, more closed cell foam or open cell foam. And you have your power supply right there. And that is a nice piece of equipment right there. There it is. There's your power supply. Got a beautiful blue on it. Has labeling on exactly what you're uh, what you're doing here. You got your uh, shielding gas, your foot pedal, pulse arc, tack, tack, uh, your communication ports, power, and your stylus. Everything is labeled. So far, I see amazing and well-made product coming from these guys. We're gonna go ahead and open up the next one because I want to see which box I start with. I'm pretty sure that the box I start with is going to be this one here, the little guy. That's probably going to have our microscope and our arm in there. Same thing, you notice the box is amazingly packed. I'm guessing this is your box of accessories. Yep, you open that box the right way. And we'll go over these accessories when we start setting up the welder. So we'll set that aside and Pull this piece of foam off, and you have the same thing as before. Layers of foam protecting everything that you have coming in these boxes. So, like I suspected, here's your arm and your microscope. And now that I've got, hopefully, I think everything out of the box, we're gonna go ahead and read some instructions about how we're gonna set this up, and I will meet you guys over at the bench talking about that. Okay, the first thing that you're gonna wanna do with your welder, can you see me? Hey, how's it going? First thing you're gonna wanna do is lay it out exactly where you're gonna want it. So for me, I've decided that I want it mounted right here. And to determine that, I very carefully took my mounting arm and I held it in place. It would help if you had a friend to do this, but you can do it yourself if you're careful and then I'm able to move it around to see exactly where I'm going to be using it at comfortably. So I plan on being right about here. I ended up drawing a dry erase marker around the base of the microscope. And where that's beneficial is that this little mounting piece goes and fits right into a cutout here. So all you need to do is then align that piece 
where you want and you can mark your holes. Hole, you, this down here. Okay, depending on how you want to mount it, there are a couple different ways. If you have a workbench where you're able to screw into and clamp onto a tabletop, the instructions tell you how to do that. For me, I'm gonna go through my bench, just drill a hole right through, and then I'll manage it on the other side. So for me, it's gonna be, this plate is gonna mount to the bottom of the welder with this bolt going through it, just like that. And then this piece is going to go on the bottom and I'll screw it all together with this guy. So what I'm gonna probably end up doing is since I have a drawer right underneath this, I'm gonna measure the overall length of the bolt. I'll measure the thread pattern. In fact, I can do that right now. The thread is an M8 by 1.25. M8 by 1.25. That's the thread pattern in this. So what I may end up doing is getting a specialized uh, nut from the hardware store to screw onto the bottom and clamp it all into place. And that way I don't have to worry about my drawer interacting with a big knob heading down. So, but before I do that, I'll check to see if, whether or not I have the clearance. If I don't have the clearance, I'll add a kind of a squattier nut to hold that into place. So for now though, I should mention also that you have a bracket included that allows you to mount on the side of something. So you had a workbench with a wall. You can mount this onto the side and then the, uh, the microscope base will mount straight to that. So that's, Basically, you have three mounting options um, included in the box, your clamp, your L bracket, and then your uh, plates to go through a table. Well, I'll show how I get this piece onto the microscope base in just a few minutes. Should also mention that for safety, this little wing nut on top is what holds in your microscope, or excuse me, this little wing nut here holds in your microscope. So you can take that out, set this aside in case uh, you're a little hard with your setup. Best thing to do is protect the delicate pieces while you mount the bracket. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that before I start my mounting process. So I stuck my bolt through on this plate so I had good measurement of what it was going to look like on the bottom. Stuck this guy on and then with a sharpie I marked where I want to cut my threads at. That gives me enough room to add another washer and an M8125 nut to go on there. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I have that otherwise I'll run to the hardware store and grab it. Okay I cut the bolt a bit shorter and by making that cut um, or the way I make that cut is by aligning my saw right along one of the threads cutting it through and then going and rounding over the top of it taking away any burr or anything like that and by doing that you should have a nice leftover thread for your nut to go onto. so next what we're gonna do is mount this assembly to our arm and in order to do that, I'm going to use the supplied screws here that are a Allen key. And let me go ahead and I'm going to actually add some Loctite to these so they don't come loose. They probably won't since they're going to be down and uh, against something, but uh, more secure the better, I think.
mounted arm that has some good articulation depending on how I want to uh, weld or position. So we'll go ahead and move on next to uh, the fun stuff, putting everything all together. Mounting is probably, probably the most complicated task that you're gonna have to do mostly because it's figuring out where you want it, figuring out whether or not it articulates in the directions that you want. Um, the other thing I took into account was when I'm done using it, I want to be able to push it out of the way and make sure that it is safe. So being able to put it where I want it once it's, uh, once it's out of use for the day, uh, have it out of the way and safe. So that's what uh, I took into account when I put my setup. All right, let's go over what's in the box. What's in the box? So, sorry. <laughs> Movie quote. Hi, dog. Thank you. Thank you much. She's trying to make sure I'm okay. I'm, I'm okay, I promise. Yeah, you're a sweetheart. All right. So I have a foot pedal. I have a data port. Got some grounding clips. Uh, this is a, another data port of some sort. Power supply. Pair of uh, grounding cross locks. And jump ring pliers, uh, accessories for uh, welding, so your diamond sharpening tool for uh, sharpening your tungsten, and your looks like a nylon brush, fiberglass brush, and some others. We'll go into that in a minute. But, uh, your uh, stylus for welding and some eyepieces and some plastic bits that we'll get to in a few minutes. So, but before I get into any of that, what I'm gonna wanna do is hook up all of my power cables and then make sure my power supply is secured where I want it. So this is, this is the, the bad boy that does all the magic for, for the welding. So I wanna make sure it's secure where it's gonna go uh, and then call it good. So I'm gonna go and, well actually, you know what, let's just do this. You got a fun little clip here that your uh, faceplate goes on. I'm gonna stand up and put that on. So it just drops in just like that. Now that you have pretty much the full weight, what you're gonna wanna do is adjust the tension for the welding arm. So I want to be able to move it and have it stay where it goes. And there's an little indication on the back here on this arm, right here at the little elbow joint, there's a plus and a minus. Um, if it's sinking down and it's not staying in place, then you want to turn it toward the plus. So I'm going to turn it toward the plus a little bit. I'm still sinking down, plus a little bit. I'm going slower down. So I'm going to just increase it a little bit. Still going down a little. Maybe a little bit more. What this is is a counterbalance, a spring of sorts that keeps your welder from springing up. So you can move it, have it stay, move it, have it stay, and then basically bring it right where you want it. So right now though, I need a little bit more because it's wanting to sink down a little bit. So, just give it a little nut. Moves, it stays, moves, stays. And I think that is going to be good. So, we are secure there. And I can move it exactly where I want it or out of the way, just like that. So I can still use my desk, but if I need to, I can bring my welder out and I can sit and I can do my stuff. And that's where the filming is gonna come in fun. So I'm gonna hook up all these data ports. If there's anything noteworthy along the way to share, I'll go ahead and tell you that. But the instructions are very, very 
uh, good about explaining what's going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll get back to you in a minute. All right, there's plenty of information out there on how to hook up a gas tank, uh, like argon or propane or, or anything else. Uh, I'm gonna forego exact instructions on how to hook up your regulator, but I am going to show you a way to test whether or not it's on tight enough or it's leaking. So what I have in this little bowl is just regular old dish soap. Not I didn't bubble it up or anything. I just put a little bit of dish soap in there, added some water, and now I'm going to use a little paintbrush to test to see whether or not I have any leaks on my tank. So I'll turn the pressure on. So pressure's on. I'm gonna go ahead and test all of the areas that would have a gas flow. And I'm gonna inspect all of those. You will see little bubbles show up, but if you see like a little bubble and crude, consistent bubbling and, and, and movement, that's an indication that you have a leak either in your uh, regulator not being on tight enough or the threads on your tank. Do not put the white Teflon tape on these, uh, not good for them. So basically what I'm looking for now is leaks. I don't see any there, nothing I'm seeing. So my tank is nice and tight. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off for now because I don't want to have it consistently on. I don't want it on all the time. If I'm using my welder, I'll turn my tank on. If I'm done using my welder, I'll turn my tank off. What that does is that there's little seals and everything in all of these areas. And by having it consistently under pressure, you're, you're uh, Mind is going blank. Uh, where it's like wear and tear, so you don't want to have it consistently always on. Turn it off when you're done and call it good. The other thing is tank safety. If you have a tank, make sure you secure it somewhere, like underneath uh, a workbench with a strap tie on it that holds it straight up and down. These things, if you knock off the top, it can be a missile, and the last thing you want is a missile in your jewelry studio. So make sure that these things are secure, they're not leaking, and you can use them safe. So, like I said before, argon, I may have said it in another live, argon is an inert gas, which means it's not a flammable reactive substance. What it does though, is it provides a beautiful little, like say for example, you build a biodome out in the middle of the desert and you're trying to grow stuff, Biodome creates a nice covering, a little ecosystem. That little ecosystem is what argon does to welds. So instead of this big, bulky ecosystem of flammable gas, argon is a little tiny toot of gas around your weld to make sure that it does exactly as it should be doing, bonding those two pieces of metal together. So. Argon is your toot gas. You're only gonna use a puff of it here and there, and you're gonna go ahead and keep this thing shut off when you're not using it, and make sure you test it for leaks before you do. All right, let's talk about cord management. So you have a little bottom piece here on the 200i2 that pops off, and what I'm gonna do is just put my wires underneath that and then I will pop this over them. My cords managed in such a way that they're organized and out of the way. Yeah, so the last thing we're gonna do for uh, cord setup, power cord. The fun, most amazing part of it. But once we have that, we can figure out our adjustments for a microscope and go from there. All right, let's do the owners. Peel off our plastic screen, hit our power button, and wait for our friend to warm up. All right, so we have our, our start screen. Um, see if I can tip you guys down. You can see that there's a nice bright light 
under here that allows me to uh, see what I'm doing. It's my electrode. What I'm going to need to do is uh, adjust the microscope up here to make sure that my electrode is right in line. I like having it right in the uh, just upper portion of my microscope so I can see this. I can take a photograph and let you guys know what that looks like and I can insert it here. Um, but what I'm going to want to do is set up my electrode and I'm going to go ahead and do that first by making sure that all my cords and cables are adjusted like they should be and then I'm going to go ahead and remove my little cap here okay and I have basically my cullet for my electrode and I'm going to go ahead and grab an electrode from a little supplied bag here and that is your electrode so what I want to do is insert my electrode into my cullet and then I'm going to use the handpiece here to adjust the cullet. So there's a, a little line here. This it should be right in the middle of that. So there's a gasket and a line. I'm going to bring that down. That's where I should be. We'll go ahead and throw that in. So once this is in and tight, semi-tight, I can go ahead and adjust my electrode. And I'll set my little depth scale right there. Go up a little bit more. Alright. Careful, the electrodes are sharp. And then I'm going to go ahead and insert this and see what we look like. That's about what it should look like. Tip you guys down. That's what I'm going to use to weld. Now that I have that there, I'm going to readjust and make sure that uh, my microscope eyepieces show that being right where I want it. And it's looking good. That's exactly where I want it. I'll show you a picture of what it looks like now. All right, I have my gas pressure on. I've got all the stuff hooked up and I've set the welder to weld silver. So we're gonna go ahead and I've got this uh, ring here that's just kind of a, basically a scrap ring that I plan on just practicing some welds, checking it out, and hopefully I have you guys zoomed in and close enough to take a look. Hey everyone, it's Chris, Lion Punch Forge. Here at the end of the video, I wanted to share some of my, uh, of my thoughts on the Orion welders or just any kind of new skill that you may have or you're trying to master. Now, there's going to be uh, things that pop up, new skills, new techniques, and it's really important to remember, and I need to remind myself this sometimes too, that when you start something new, there's a good chance that you're not going to be very good at it. So there's a, uh, a mantra that I like to follow. The difference between good and great is the mastery of the fundamentals. So the very basic skills, if you can execute the very basic skills at the top of your game, then you're going to be able to move on to those more advanced things. There's no secret technique. There's no secret to getting, uh, you know, there's no, you know, high speed, low drag thing that you're going to need to learn in order to be great. It all has to do with mastering the fundamentals of whatever you're doing. So getting good at the very basics. It's only about you competing with yourself. It doesn't have anything to do with you competing with anyone else. So for me, starting to use a welder, in particular the Orion 200i3, I'm not going to be very good at it. And that's okay, because it gives me an opportunity to uh, learn, 
to make mistakes, to get good at something new. To, I may be good at some other things, but this is something new. This is something to expand my universe, to expand my art, my craft. And what it does is allows me to get outside of my comfort zone because growth only occurs outside of your comfort zone. But I think the quote go, comfort zone's nice, but nothing ever grows there. So that said, I want to preface everything so for or this, this point forward with I'm learning. I'm not going to be the greatest at anything that I'm showing the very basics of, that I'm showing my progress for learning. I'm going to make mistakes. You're going to make mistakes, but those mistakes make them mean something. The only way they mean something is if you learn from them. If you get frustrated by them and you decide that you're gonna quit, then you haven't learned anything from the mistake. Mistakes are where growth occurs. So learn from them. Join me as I start down the journey of learning how to arc weld. Um, watch me as I make mistakes and uh, maybe I can help you grow along the way. So thanks for watching and this has been the first installation of Pulse Arc Welding. Lion Punch Forge. See you guys later.